Hey everybody, it's Bruce and the Dog on the Floor, and today we're going to build the intuition for Publish and Subscribe. We're going to do it with a basic animation, just so you can see the motivation behind the feature and what's actually going on behind the scenes once it's time to blow out an implementation. Let's get started. Okay, let's set this up. Let's say that we have some type of a service that wants to communicate with several clients that are interested in the information. Now, this is not a typical web system. In a typical web system, I have multiple services and multiple clients. And I have the need to send messages between them. And in particular, there might be some groupings that are interesting to me, like maybe the greens want to communicate and maybe these blues also want to communicate. Well, that becomes particularly awkward if I have to manage the grouping of the communication myself, especially as I get into certain things like clustering and features like that that are going to improve reliability, but at the cost of complexity, unless my infrastructure is managing these problems for me. And in the Elixir environment, I have a particular problem that I have a mechanism for reliability. That's a monitored process. This is a gen server that basically manages the life cycle of an individual process. It handles the starting, the stopping, and the restarting. And I communicate with something based on the PID that it has. And if that's my mechanism for communication, then I'm in trouble because when that client dies, What's going to happen is this thing is going to die and then the supervisor is going to bring it back to life. And what's going to happen to the PID? Well, it's not the same one anymore. It's going to be a new PID. And then that's going to make it hard for the service to contact the client again. And so what we're going to do instead is refer to this thing by name. So that's one level of interruption that we've got to solve. And that's typically done with registries. But remember, we're not talking about a single name. We're talking about multiple names that are associated with a single topic of interest. And what we're going to want to do instead is put a service in the middle, and we're going to call that our pub sub service. So think of a pub sub service as publish and subscribe. The book on the bottom is a registry of everyone interested on a topic their names and their process IDs so that we can kind of keep track of them. And think of the tower as a broadcast service so that when individual services send out messages, they can send it to the pub sub server instead of the individual user. And then the pub sub server can then forward that message to the interested clients. Here's how it works. So I've got a client, maybe the client is interested in a topic. So the client is going to register interest on that topic. And let's say that this is the green servers and the green clients. So now when a service wants to send some type of a message on the topic, like, hey, maybe this particular list that I'm working on has changed and you should reload the list. Sort of like the, the service that we're going to build with PubSubs that the points on this puzzle have changed. So we want to be able to send messages, notifying them to refresh your system based on what's in the database. And then what's going to happen is the pub sub service is going to look up in the book for all interested parties in the particular topic. And then the pub sub service can forward this on. But of course, this type of service is much more interesting when there is more than one broadcast service and when there are more than one clients. So now if I have a single service that wants to broadcast on a topic, the PubSub service can look up all the interested parties and forward that message on. And that's what makes the PubSub service so powerful for web type applications that have things like chat rooms and even mundane services that might have multiple users accessing those services at one time. And so we're going to use this service to actually make sure 
that our users have topics that stay up to date, like a puzzle with individual points. And that's an excellent thing. From Bruce and the dog on the floor, this is Groxio Learning.